Okay, so I'm redoing a select screen tutorial and these are the images that are in my system SFF file and they're group one. They're in group one. These are all the select screen images including these two arrows. I added I added them the same way. I added them in the last tutorial. You should already know how to do this by now. All of these Im images have been palleted. Well, these have been palleted. Some of them are, have not been palleted, meaning that they're still indexed, but they, uh, they don't need a transparency color. Okay, so go to your system DF file and below the title screen. And real quick, um, before I had screwed up the title screen, so what I did to fix the title screen was take um, training and remove the letter and then um, put the letter that would have been for training which was H in place where watch is and so basically there are nine letters they just need to be in the correct places before I didn't do that correct do that right also the begin action starts at um, image zero because all images everything basically starts at zero does not start at one okay on to the character select screen um, the fade in time and fade out time should both be the same and they're ten here I believe there were ten up here Previously, I think I had this on 15. Not sure why. Okay, so um, next comes the rows. Uh, I have this for the select screen. At some point, um, I have to re edit it because I really don't want this to be part of the background. But they were, so I'm going to have to re edit it anyway. Um, so. The total rows are the amount of rows going down, and I believe there's 11, so that is why I put 11 here. And the total columns, columns going this way is 14. Pretend that this is a perfect square when you make the rows you need to pretend that it pretend that it's a perfect square in reality it's not there is a way to make it so um, the images I mean there is a way to make it so the character sprites will only fit a certain area I'll show you what it's really supposed to look like this is this is what it's actually supposed to look like Every place that has a pink square is where the character's portrait is going to sit. This area is going to be reserved for the word select will be. This is where the stage name will appear. To get this type of non-symmetrical select screen it involves editing the select definition file and that is um, probably going to be one of the last tutorials because even though that is a part of the select section it's um, not a part of the system DEF file so um, the first thing that you're going to do is once you figured out how many rows and columns you would have if it was a perfect square you should then start setting um, the rest of the section you should start working on the rest of the section wrapping equals zero means that once the cursor gets to the, the end it'll stay and you uh, push it over it won't do anything if you were to keep going in one direction and it was set to one, it would wrap around to the next row below it. 
if you're making a really large screen pack, you should set it to one, but this screen pack is not for a humongous amount of characters, so I'm leaving it leaving it at zero. The position is where the first portrait is going to appear. So it would be for this square right here. This is where all this is going to be like the reference point for the rest of the boxes to appear. So the reference point or the very first box which represents the top left corner is uh that's what the position is for. You could set it down here or over here or over here or whatever. But all the boxes will be always to the right and below it. Show empty boxes should be set to zero when you you're making a screen pack that's going to be asymmetrical and move over empty boxes should also be set to zero when you're making that type of screen pack. Show empty boxes is basically the most important feature. It's the most important thing that you have to set to make that type of uh, select screen. Move over empty boxes should also be set to zero. And the reason for this is that when you start editing the select definition file, um, after a create code that theoretically you could have a character in, and it basically just creates an empty space. So you don't want to be able to select those boxes, and you don't want to be able to see those boxes. So you, you kind of can under you can probably understand how this is done from what I'm telling you, but I'm going to show you how it's done in another tutorial. Okay, so cell size um, is the size of the cell, and this is, that was the height and width of the box. Cell spacing is set to 7. Unfortunately, you do not have control over um, your spacing at the top and bottom, so the spacing on the left side I mean, the spacing on the right side is going to be the same as the spacing at the bottom. So you can't create like super skinny, um, or I don't know, if you're going to have like fat columns and thin rows, you really couldn't do that. Um, after that, you have your cell background sprite. The cell background sprite is this one and I have a reference as group 1 animation 5 the random cell the random sprite which is supposed to be the icon for random select I actually haven't gotten random select to work but most of the time I just use um, player 2's cursor as a random select sprite. So it probably doesn't matter anyway because you might not see random select. Okay, so the random select switch time if you do get it working is uh, 6 game ticks. You want to make this a higher number so you don't end up trying to uh, press enter and then it switches the character on you and you get something that you did not want. Um, the cursor start cell should be the very first cell which is going to be the one in the top left corner so it should be set to zero zero. And this is not the coordinates, this represents the cell. So it's, this is not X and Y, this is just the first cell. Well, it is X and Y, but it's X and Y on the coordinate of the select portion of your select screen. So it'll be just this one. If you had it as um, 1, 1, it would be the cell right here. Okay, so the cursor active animations is, um, it can be a sprite or an animation. This is one of those that you can just interchange, interchange it with. And I have it as an animation, so it'll blink and since that's P1 it is the green cursor for P2 it's going to be the red cursor
the cursor done uh it has an animation number because um when you look down here the animation that is linked to is <clears throat> root one sprite three which is the green sprite now the done sprite is just um p to select sprite the cursor sounds and the cursor move sounds are part of the sound file I showed you how to I showed you how to edit sounds in a previous tutorial everything is the same for P2 except for the cursor animation and the done sprite have been reversed oh and this P2 cursor blank if the two cursors should start overlapping it's if it's set to one it means that P2's cursor will blank if it's set to zero it means it won't I definitely suggest that you should keep it um, on one but I don't remember what happened when both of the select cursors were animations I believe they will still technically blink because the animation that I'm making isn't truly making the uh, cursor blank all it's doing is just lightening it and darkening it okay so the next section is the uh, random move sound and uh, stage move sound and the stage done sound again um, all that stuff is in the sound file and it says random move sound cancel zero one to have the random sound move cancel itself when it's played repeatedly I don't know why it would continue to repeat anyway um, I would suggest you use the same universal cancel sound which is right here the portrait sprite is 900 leave it at group 900 image 0 the portrait all said needs to just be 0 0 keep it at 0 0 um, the portrait scale you won't know how to scale it until you add some characters to your select definition file the title offset is the is where you're going to put the title of whatever kind of match you're going to be going into um, it should be it should go up here so it needs to be oh I think it might start about 400 and it needs to be very close to the top so the offset's probably going to be about 5 down the title font I haven't made yet okay now the big portraits are for um, what happens after you select the character and they would appear down here that portrait is group 9000 image 1 the face offset is um, for P1 I have it as being about 6 pixels to the right and it's down past the halfway point at 360 so I have it at 360 and it's the same for it should be the same for P2 well that's P1 that's the name offset it should be the same for P2 the scale again that's one of those things you won't know until after you get a character and facing should be 1 for P1 and it should be minus 1 for P2 and the scale needs to be the same for both okay now the names I have the names um, they should be slightly above the um, image of the character so I'm going to make it slightly higher and it should appear here that's where I want the name to to be and the font needs to be the same for both characters but I haven't made the font yet I believe I will probably make the font um, true type 